You're watching WCSD Cable Television from Cowie County High School. In recent years, it has been a growing field of work. You may have heard of Occupational Health and Safety, or OSH, or heard of people who study or work in the field. But do you know exactly what OSH is and what the people specialized in it do? Hello, my name is Ragda Abulhaja, and with me here, I have a student worker working at Murray State University's OSH department. His name is Sean Knowles, and he's here to talk about his field. Stay tuned here on Calvary Connections from the WCSD Cable Television. Thank you for being here. Um, it's my pleasure. Okay, so what exactly is OSH? So it's Occupational Safety and Health. Um, there's multiple fields. Uh, so there's safety engineers, and then what we do here at Murray State is uh, Occupational Safety and Health Management mainly, uh, but we do also have environmental. So you can have it be a health, safety, environmental, um, or you could be a safety specialist or a safety coordinator, auditor. Uh, or you could actually go work for Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is uh, through the government. Um, so, do they like, um, um, okay, so what are possible work options? So, you could work um, in the oil field or construction. Uh, you can also go work in general industry. That's where a lot of us go uh, at Murray State. So, work for companies like Nissan or Rolls Royce, uh, Mercedes companies like that build things inside factories. Uh, and in there, we'll do a lot of things. Um, we, we cite standards and things like that to make sure the workers are compliant uh, with government regulations, but also we want to keep them safe every day. Um, OK, so what does a typical safety manager do in a construction site? On a construction site, um, it's actually where I worked. Uh, we go out, we audit, we check, make sure fire extinguishers are good, make sure Guys have PPE, which is personal protective gear, uh, so you think of hard hats or gloves, things like that. Um, we ensure that they have those. We also do a thing called stretch and flex, so um, you know, these guys work hard all day, so one of the things we'll go out and do is kind of get them to take a break and stretch and uh, flex their muscles so that they don't get sore and have ergonomic issues later. Uh, and uh, what do they do in general industry? So in general industry, um, it's kind of the same. You're going to have audits and things like that, but you're going to have more um, static workers, which means they stand in place rather than dynamic with, uh, with construction. There's a lot of movement. So in general industry, with that static work, we have to worry about mats on the ground for ergonomic issues with legs uh, and also how much they lift, how many times they move something within an hour uh, for a certain task, things like that. Um, so it's a little bit different, but it's still along the same lines of, the, uh, of work. Um, okay, here we have a graph um, on injuries in the workplace. Um, okay, um, so the blue um, represents highway ac highway incidents. The red explain, um, represents homicides. Green represents falls, and purple represents being struck by an object and. It just represents how much, um, how many death or how many injuries happen in the workplace. Um, um, okay, can you um, can you work with the private sector or government sector? So yes, yeah, so you can do either one. Um, so if you work in oil or gas or general industry or something like that, it's going to be a private company. Um, but you can go work for the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is through the federal government. Um, and if you did that, you would uh, close to the same job, except now you're making sure that the safety people that work within an organization are following the rules and guidelines uh, to keep employees safe. So they'll come in, do an audit, make sure we have guards on machines, um, PP is available to the employees, uh, anything safety related is being done uh, according to regulations is what is their main objective. Um, 
Uh, where does a safety professional get his standards or regulations from? Okay, so um, the federal government releases uh, CFRs or Code of Federal Regulations. Um, so it would be 29 Code of Federal Regulations, uh, 1910. That's going to be your general industry. And then for construction, it's going to be 1926. So they're big, thick books. Um, they go through every standard. So you, you showed falls uh, in your graphic. Uh, falls is one of the top five incidents uh, in uh, construction work. So we um, will go in and we have standards. So how high up you have to have fall protection or if you're climbing a ladder, uh, we have three points of contact. So you have to have both feet and one hand on the ladder at all times. Um, um, is, what is the average salary for a safety professional? So it's going to depend on where you work. Um, in this part of the country, uh, it's going to be above like average pay. Um, but uh, if you go out to California, it'd be much higher. In Houston, it's good. It just depends on where you live. Um, but there is definitely potential for a higher salary market. Um, okay, at this time, um, this is my guest, Sean Knowles. And at this time, we'll take a, we'll take a quick break. Stay tuned, because we'll be right back. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome, okay, um, here we have a, the graphic again. Um, can you like explain um, about some of the uh, injuries or ways people? Yeah. yeah. So with highway incidents, you're gonna have workers, uh, so you gotta think of CDL drivers, so uh, semi drivers, they drive across country for work. Um, so you can have incidents like that. You also have construction workers who build roads. Um, they even though they're wearing safety equipment that makes them bright, sometimes incidents do happen. Uh, so you have those types of incidents when it comes to highway highways. Uh, and then there's also incidents where it's just delivering packages. You have FedEx workers and UPS workers as well um, and the Postal Service. So there's lots of workers out, out there on the highway and, and accidents happen everywhere. So, um, And then for what was the red one, homicides. Uh, so you get to think about gas stations or liquor store workers. Um, places like that, banks, um, if a robbery does take place, uh, a lot of them happen with, with weapons and uh, deaths do occur. So a lot of those homicide rates come from there. Uh, and there is some home health care workers uh, that have encountered some homicide issues as well. Uh, and then for falls, it's actually uh, in the top five, like I said earlier, uh, incidents that happen. Um, people in, uh, struck by lightning while on, uh, or electricity while on a ladder. So you get struck by electricity, and that doesn't necessarily kill you, but the fall will. Um, so you have those, and then sometimes accidents just happen. People get complacent with their job, and they fall off a ladder. Uh, and then for struck by objects, so you can have um, a forklift driver run into you. That would be struck by um, uh, something to fall off of uh, equipment. That would be a struck by. Uh, 
hard hats. One of the reasons we wear them is because when you're doing construction in high rise, a uh, tool could fall and hit you in the head. That would be a struck by object um, and, and the purpose for the hard hat, so. Um, okay, so if you're um, studying at a university, as a student, what classes should you emphasize on? Communications, I would definitely um, focus towards that. Of course, you want to focus on your uh, occupational safety and health classes, but we communicate on multiple different levels in our job. Um, so engineers are really good at building things, but they don't think about necessarily the worker. So I communicate between the worker and the engineer to make, thing, make sure when things are designed, they're designed uh, well enough for human interaction. Um, uh, so there's things like that. And then you also have corporate offices that you have to communicate with. So with multiple levels of communication, I would definitely focus on those classes. Um, what are some certificates you can get to support the study? So while you're in school, if you go to Murray State, um, we offer uh, occupational safety and health, general industry and construction certificates. So you go to class uh, to get credits, but you're also in there to get a certificate from uh, occupational safety and health. Uh, and you'll be given a 30-hour card for general industry and a 30-hour card for construction on completion of those classes. There are also other ones. If you come into Murray State and you have experience in construction or another field, you can go out and get um, your certified health and safety uh, technician license, which is a construction uh, certificate. Um, but those do require experience. So um, for the CHST, it's uh, two years on the, in the, on the job. Uh, with 50% of your work being in safety. Um, we do graduate with a graduate safety professional certificate, uh, which is um, really important to us. Uh, other people that work in the field have to go take a test for the associate safety professional certificate. Um, so with us graduating with that, we can go into the field pre uh, prepared. Um, and then later on, after you have five years of experience, you get your certified safety professional uh, license. And that um, is kind of like the PhD for us. Uh, it's, it's the last certificate you're going for. Um, are so, what are some challenges um, to the field? If there are? Again, I'd say communication. Because um, you're communicating on so many levels, you have uh, the hourly worker, um, and then you have, like I said, engineers, and they're, they're very focused on their designs and things like that, so it's kind of hard to get those communications uh, going. Um, you kind of have to build relationships, and that can be difficult to do. Um, what is rewarding about OSH? Honestly, saving people, uh, protecting people, it's very rewarding. Um, definitely helps you sleep at night. Uh, I've enjoyed that part a lot. But it's also, um, you get involved with the employees. Um, so it's, you kind of learn about their lives and things like that, and it's it's kind of really, re really rewarding. Um, okay, before we go, uh, what would you tell someone who's going into OSH? To be open-minded. Um, incidents happen, and there's not much we can do about them, uh, except for put things in place to protect people when they do happen. Uh, so if you can keep the open mind that the employees aren't um, at fault, uh, always. Uh, that's, a, that's a good good mindset to have going into it. Okay, I want to thank my guest Sean Knowles for joining us today. That's all for uh, this edition of Calgary Connections. I'm Ragda Abulheja for WCSD Cable Television.